multitasking, pouring the coffee. Some and French press coffee. Talking at the same time. I will give it this to the French. This is espresso. This and the Louvre are the two things <laughs> they've done right for me. The Louvre. The Louvre. Oh, I was cr- watching a Netflix show where they, were, where they were uh, busting into the Louvre. They were like stealing a painting. Stealing? Really cool. What were they, which painting? I wonder how often that they... Oh, it's just some, some painting to... he. This guy wanted to get back. Were you it's dis- called Lupin or something like that. It's a French oh, show. Yeah, great show. Yeah, Watched yeah, yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. They have a second season out now. Oh, do they? Yeah, they do. Oh, I have to watch that. You, you know what's disappointing for me? What? The Mona Lisa. Because there's no eyebrows? Or? No, it's so small. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, I had seen it in all these movies and stuff. I'm like, wow, things got to be big. You see the Mona Lisa, but then you turn around and it's like you got the coronation of Napoleon, which yes. is like 40 feet tall, 100 yes. feet wide. Guy painted it. For or you like, go to the Sistine Chapel and you like look up and you're like, holy shit. Yeah, like Michelangelo nailed it. Yeah. You know what I mean? But I don't know. What have you? That's something I, I thought about the other day. Just a quick tangent. Is there an NFT on the Mona Lisa? No, how, how this economy has destroyed multi-generational thought. Like you built a, you built a, even now in Barcelona, you still have the great, I forgot the, I know, I know the cathedral there, but I mean, they're still working on it. They've been working on it for, it's so beautiful. It looks alien. I I, I think it was, well, I don't want to get into it. I'm looking it up right now. I have no idea. It's just this cathedral of Barcelona. I have no idea. Yeah, but when you look at the inside pictures, it's not of this world. No, no, it's not. (laughs) It's amazing. So, you know, they, they, there was an idea that it would pass on from family to family to family, that the work would be multi-generational. It's cool. You know what I mean? Yeah. They had that long-term mentality and that's gone in our current economic situation. Why is it that... You ready? Mm. Why is it that we all have babies, we procreate, pass things on genetically, but our economy has no genetics baked into it? There's mm. no natural growth, evolution, or development that sits within it. They created this leaky system that in no way, shape, or form is bound by how nature works. Why would you create something... That goes against the natural flow of nature. It'll never work for humans ever if you do not respect the thing that even gives us life. It's the same with um, farming does, practices. Does that I mean, make sense? it's the same thing. You know, we we can look at regenerative farming. Yep, and we can see that that works. It's proven. They've had farms that have been in existence for 60, 70 years of regenerative farming, and it works. Yeah. Can you scale it? That's the question. I don't know. I don't know. That's that's this. Could you scale it? You know, across the world, I have no idea. But that's something that needs to be worked on and see. And Bill Gates owns most of the farming. He owns most of the farming land in the United States. A lot of farm well, land. There needs to be some regenerative farming. Yeah, and well, like personal farms, not like um, not farms for like animal feed. So seventy percent of the farmland in the United States yeah. goes to animal feed, or and soy, then, or and then corn, and then. Uh, 40% of that 70% uh, goes towards feeding human beings. So it's like, what? Where you wouldn't need that regenerative farming. Even it, Let's say people won't stop eating meat. And so we're just going to have people eating meat. Okay. Regenerative farming, it works. Pigs, cows, all of it works in regenerative farming because it replaces. Yeah. And, and there's a process and the soil actually gets better. What was that? <laughs> what was that thing? Uh, it was in Star Trek. Starts with an E, like elect- electron duplicator or something like but that. But don't you think Prince that once food? we get fake meat that tastes, so if you could go buy a a, a hundred dollar steak mm-hmm. at a fancy steakhouse and it tastes amazing, and then you could recreate that steak exactly, yep, people will buy that fake steak that tastes like a hundred dollar steak and all the bad stuff removed out of it. Yeah, hopefully, sure. yeah. Well, we, if you're we, if you're we, engineering it, you can pull any of the bad stuff yeah. out of it. Then you know what? Why wouldn't people buy that? I yeah, think that's. I think need, that's the future. It is the future. We don't need. And then we're not going to be killing. Do you know? What I found out at the store. I guess we're just ripping on this episode for a second. I so I'm shopping over at Sprouts. They started in Arizona, mm-hmm. um, but they're here local in the area. They sell seaweed, frozen seaweed. Wow, large things of kelp that I can just go and buy. It, it's ten dollars, right? And I get four packs of a ton of seaweed. Seaweed. It's one of the most nutrient dense. It's super it's nutrient dense. Yeah. It carries all these vitamins and minerals for me, right? Tons of chlorophyll. It also takes methylmercury out of the ocean. It reduces the amount of acidity in those waters. And it's infinitely available through sunlight. 
and it's grown in cold water. So it requires no energy to, it's just the sun baking <laughs> down and you just go grab it. <laughs> like, why aren't we eating more of that? Yeah. And why, why aren't we, why can't we recreate that? I know. I mean, we can make seaweed steaks that taste amazing. That's what I'm talking about. Yes. All we got to do is change a couple little things mm-hmm. with how the electrons are floating around. Yes. Right? In the seaweed to change the flavor. So I want to get into, speaking of that, just yeah. changing a few things and okay. getting into We're something that seaweed. makes it amazing. Um, I want, And that's good for you. I want to get into what you can sell on Tartle. Now what you can sell and then how the future looks for Tartle and why we're so excited okay. about the future. Things you can sell right now. Um, Tartle has the ability to ingest any type of data. It doesn't matter what it is. I don't care if it's satellite data, um, if it's data that comes off of your Apple Watch, what have you. At this moment, you can sell data uh, that comes from your bank accounts. You can sell data that comes from your ancestry accounts. So any of your ancestry stuff, right? So if somebody wants to do research on it, you can sell your genetic code on Tartle. Pretty cool. First people ever to do that right there on Tartle. You can sell your health records. You can sell photos. You can sell audio information. And in the future, We'll be able to sell anything beyond that. You'll be able to sell a podcast episode. You'll be able to sell your dating information. Maybe you want to find new people. Maybe a seller wants to go on there and maybe find another seller. Buy people that buy information off of people's profiles. Mm -hmm. Oh, you local in this area? Maybe this will work. Maybe people are more willing to share. In the future, you'll be able to sell data that's streaming down from satellites. They have their own function and file system and everything well, else that goes let, with let's it. Let's stay with that. This is interesting. Okay. The dating aspect, because I, I think this is really important. You could go in there and say, I want it to be only in Bolivia, yep. in this certain city. Yep. And I want to, mm-hmm. I'm willing to pay for uh, someone that wants to date, here's a picture of me, here's what I look like physically. But more important, I want to understand the emotional mental aspect. You can you can buy you that. That's what I'm that. saying. Yeah. So you can have them fill out some information. Demogra- so first of all, you, you choose your demographic. Right. I'm gonna go to Bolivia. I want this biological sex. I right. want this gender. Right. Right. And this data packet that has this information because that's what's important to me. Right. And maybe it has the person's contact information within that. Mm-hmm. You can go buy that. As a data seller. If you want to spend some of your data earnings on that, you can go do so. But how valuable, here's what I'm thinking. So let's say you had like a a two page about, not just about you, Mm -hmm. but a two page questionnaire about some of the things that you value the most and then some of the things that they think that they should value and then they can rate it and scale it. That's super cool. And then how much is that data worth to you if somebody... If somebody was interested in you, if they saw a picture in a bio... Maybe you find the love of your life. If somebody was interested in that... And then they took the time to show interest enough to fill all this out. Yeah. You know, that that's going to, that that's not just swiping right, swiping left really quick and just going off the physical. That's going off the mental. You could put spiritual questions in there. You oh, can do whatever yeah. you want. You can it's free market. You can go yeah. wild. Yes. You're not limited to dating apps anymore. Yes. It's, a, it's free now. It's a free yes. market. You can get in there and you can learn whatever you need to learn. And you know what the value of that? You may spend 10 cents getting that information. Mm-hmm. Right? but you could find someone you spend the rest of your life with. Yes, exactly. I mean, it's just one example. Right. Let's let's go, let's use another You don't example. have to wait for a dating app to like put a new type of questionnaire. No, you can do it yourself right now. Let's say you're a digital artist. Ooh, yay. You want to sell you artwork? a masterpiece. You want to sell your NFT information? Yes. Go for it. Put it on Tartle. These are things in the future we will be able to sell. We can ingest any type of information and encrypt it for you. Let's say I'm an author. Yeah. And I want to sell my book. No problem. You can put the whole manuscript on there and sell it to the world. Skip Amazon. Yeah. What here, Jason? Why would you want to have the middleman? Yes. Take your money. Yeah. The whole thing about this, you can cut out all those people creating all that waste, being leeches off the system. Mm-hmm. People leeching off of your work. Just have them get it directly from you. Get all the value for your work. Let Let's say you are. Uh, Let's say you're somebody that does, we'll just use an example. Maybe you have a talent of being a macro investor and you love to collect information and you want to have a newsletter and sell that information. Okay. Well then monthly. Go, you can go do your own 
primary research. How cool is that? Yeah. So you go into Tartle and you have you run your own little fund or whatever you're doing yourself when you've right. got a group of friends and you want to get a thing out there, right? You want to be the new Motley Fool or whatever the hell yeah, it's yeah, called. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Go buy all your data, put together your... Oh, you can sell your report also? Yeah. How cool. That's what so I'm saying. So me as an individual could go in here, buy a bunch of data from people, write a report, and then sell my report. But the report is on the blockchain. That's the And cool everything's part. recorded. So we're going to know right. that you, in fact, are the person with the provenance. That information came from Tartle. First and foremost, there is a record that that data happened here on this marketplace. And if you were to get something, someone gives you something from the outside and it doesn't have that stamp on it, don't touch it. Yes. You don't want that information. Who knows who's seen it, what have you. It wasn't ethically sourced. You'll know and feel good about what you're doing by buying and selling things on the total marketplace. Well, I mean, and that's why non-fungible tokens are the same thing. Yes. You know, because it's it's it, 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 there's proof of authenticity. I know for a fact that this NFT was sold at this point. Mm-hmm. Done. And we have that. Yeah. And there's a record that everybody can test against to see that mm-hmm. it happened here on Tartle. And the person was fairly compensated for it. So we'll one, one more example because we could do this fucking all day long. And I, I don't all bore people, but, day. Uh, you're a musician. Humans. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, humans. We could tag. We create. It's whatever we, we create. We could tag our children and say that <laughs> my child is here on Tartle. Right. My profile of my child is here. If a school, right, mm. if a school wants to come in, Mm-hmm. and like get kids for their academy. They want to buy data. Right. It's like, is this child going to be a good fit? The parent could go in there and be like, here's the profile stuff. I want my kid to go to a good school. You can pay us for it. Let me let me, let me me give you one. This is a fun one. Are you go ready? Ahead, yeah. Okay, Mr. Billionaire, millionaire, multimillionaire. You want to help climate stability? You want to help educational access? Mm-hmm. Sell your Bitcoin key on Tardo. Smoke. That's awesome. And then donate that earnings. All the earnings. Yeah. Yeah. To one of the biggest causes of humanity because that's what you can do on the Toronto marketplace. You can do that. Yeah. How it's, cool is that? Yeah. How much and, and let's say let's say you have let's say you have if there's four and a half billion people on the Toronto marketplace and you have two million in Bitcoin and you put that key to sell that key on the Toronto marketplace. Yeah. You have the potential if everybody gave fifty cents or twenty five cents to hopefully get the key, you have potential to raise billions of dollars right? for and you could just climate choose, stability, you for educational access, for uh, economic equalization. For all the bids you get in for it, yes. you just choose one at random like a lottery and mm-hmm. sell it off. Yeah. But all those other earnings, you just put that towards an audience. And, and then how, how that's so much better to help humanity than anything else that you could do with... Um, See, it just eliminates a middleman, like, like not not for profits. You know, like we have those, we have the ability to be able to have NGOs and not for profits, and they can sign up. Yeah. And then w- whether you're um, a place that we helped in the Philippines that helps, you know, uh, abandoned dogs and hurt or dogs, children of Asia, our children of Asia, or whatever it may yep. be, we you have the potential to be able to to go in there mm-hmm. and and do work. Yep. And and give those earnings to that. So it's not just about making money. No, it's, it's more than that. It's about sharing, uplifting, empowering, educating. It doesn't, you know, we can all die wealthy and we can all die poor. Mm-hmm. It doesn't do anything for us as human beings. When you come out of the womb, if someone's pouring like gold coins on you, right, into <laughs> balloons, you're just like swimming in it like yes. a little infant baby. Does that do anything for the baby? Is it actually enriching that well, baby's understanding of life itself. Well, they said, so I was listening to an evolutionary psychologist the other day on a podcast, and he's known for child development stuff. He says it's actually worse. Through the studies, they followed like generational, like when you give a child yeah. everything, it's actually, actually the children that do the best are the ones that's had trauma. They have, well, they have to work. <laughs> and that can learn from it. Because trauma it. does two things to you. It's a 50 50 shot. Yeah. It, it, it can fuck you up for the rest of your life. Or it can catalyze or it can, you. It's a catalyze you to go be great. Correct. You know, I mean, Elon Musk was super poor. If we want to use him as an example. He I was, was super, super poor. poor. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah. So the list goes on and on. You just got to, you know, it's like you can either wallow around or you can just pull yourself up and be like, let's get to work. So I, I want to compare um, investing in Tartle for, for investors that are out there that may be listening to this with REITs and NFTs. So I think this is really interesting because let's say you're in real estate investment or, yeah. or let's say, say stocks. So it, these are assets. I'm purchasing assets. Yeah. So I want to purchase 
these assets. Why would I invest in Tartle over a read over buying shares of Google or Facebook those or are Metaverse old, those or whatever. Are systems. Yeah. You could be buying all that stuff, right? right? It's a system based on centralization. Yes. Lack of sovereignty. Mm-hmm. Right. And it's completely dominated by interest rates and inflation. Mm-hmm. Hands down. It's that's, it's a corrupt, ill working system over there. But if you put your money in turtle, you're betting on human beings to share information, right? To evolve together, to uplift one another. In something that doesn't have a barrier to entry, that is always evolving, always growing, always increasing in value because there's always work being put in. Just because money goes into a stock in the S&P 500 doesn't actually generate work. It's just changing values on a piece of paper. It doesn't actually elevate human understanding. It doesn't solve problems. So if you're going to invest in something, invest in a system that is truly evolutive. Right. Not one that's leaking like a sieve. Based on bad fundamentals. Well, you know, it's also, it's silly, you know, to, you, you look at, you, you, it's silly because you look at Google, right? Mm-hmm. And the billions of dollars that they've made and they've made investors, because I'm, I'm talking on the vesting scenario. And they just came up with a better algorithm for search and then continue to evolve in that. Ooh. They also said, oh, okay, well, in this search, we can run ads. Yeah. And that's their model. Yeah, but. DARPA came out with a, at the <laughs> Jet Propulsion Lab. They came up with a thing called Memex. The, its ability to search things multidimensionally. Oh yes, yeah. Blows Google out of the water. Yeah, but it's not used. But Google comes out with a slightly enhanced algorithm to deliver more ads to people. Yeah. So who cares? So that the information can still be piped through the servers of the NSA. But but it, it's 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 so silly to look at. Oh okay yeah, yeah yeah I'm just trying to find the next Google. No. You found something that's 10x more. It's a hundred X more, a thousand X more. You found, you know what you found? You found humanity. Yeah. For the first time, there's a glimmer of hope. There's a glimmer of truth that you have found. And that's in people. Everything you've been betting on are these old systems for people that really are kind of detached from the reality of what is occurring. Attach yourself to human beings. Create a real relationship, help people create real value in their lives. Uplift humanity. Support the world. Yes. It's all, well. you know, you can make yourself rich all day long. Great. But if you're not helping someone feed themselves, if you're not helping decrease the ocean level rise, right? If you're not doing that, you're not really doing much. Crime. I mean, you're, 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 and we talked about this before, the economic incentive of crime is important. And so when you're following these old incentives, incentives you're increasing crime how many people are pushed to do illegal things because of the way yes. that system is designed well how many companies are going to do that so if i have inflation it's rising my margins my profit margins are going less i've heard an example the other day on this the guy was talking about this is great he said he said if i'm making a bottle of wine i love wine yeah i know yeah he said if i'm making a bottle of wine yeah you love wine like i love coffee yeah but if i'm making a bottle of wine and all of a sudden because supply chain issues the grapes go, the cost of the grapes go up, mm-hmm. cost of the bottle goes up. Climate goes up. Climate Soil's goes bad. up. Yeah. It's hard to get them. So on top of that, I have corks are hard to get. They're double in price. Glass and then, shortage. Yeah, glass shortage. So then on top of that, I told my customers it was going to be $25 a bottle of wine, right? Mm-hmm. My profit margin is really low. Yep. You know, I, I'm making like 2 or $3 per bottle. Then all these costs hit me, these external costs. On top of that, I have inflation. I'm really in the red. So I have an option. Not red wine. I could raise the price of the bottle of wine for the same thing and yeah. risk losing customers. Or maybe, here it is. Maybe I could like use some cheaper product. Maybe I could add some water in there. I could start cutting May, it. You see, you, see what, you see what the old system causes companies to do? Causes them to cut corners. Yes. Quality, it, it defrauds. It, it degrades, right? Mm-hmm. Defrauds, just all those things. Mm-hmm. Bad things occur when people are pressed to do that. Because people naturally want to survive. They want to succeed. Yes. People don't want to fail. No. But the system's so fragile, <laughs> people will do anything to yes. make it work. And think yes. about how embarrassed people become yes. socially when they have this thing that was their dream and it fails because it's completely out of their control. Unless you're psychotic like that lady with the blood machine. <laughs> yeah. I'm so fascinating with. <laughs> Thano of Thor- yeah, yeah, yeah. Thorno, I'm, I'm so fascinating with that whole process. But think about it though. Yes. Socially, people don't want to fail. It cripples people. The level of depression that comes in, which is mm-hmm. one of the most prevalent things happening right now in the United States, and so much that leads to suicide and inaction, 
there's so much economic loss because of depression. These things just, it becomes self-fulfilling prophecy. Well, yeah, you have mental health days now at work. You know, people are taking time off from this. You know, and they're not able to work. They're debilitated. They're just at home smoking weed all day long. Yeah. You know, playing video games because they just feel like they don't have any And why do they smoke weed? They want to feel less because there's just constant nagging pain that they can't get out of. The world Mm -hmm. is inherently uncomfortable. The news makes them uncomfortable. Their financial system is making them comfortable. Their job, socially, all these things, people just don't want to deal with it. They can't Mm -hmm. escape it. They're inundated with these things. Social media, yeah. Work is not affording people the proper evolutive necessities that they require. Things are not respected properly. Sovereignty has been squandered for too long. But you know what's badass? Tell me. Maybe maybe you're really interested in helping start schools in Africa, and you've always wanted to do that. Yeah. And it, 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 it's just been like a burden on your heart. You know, I'll use that terminology. Share your data, donate the earnings for someone building You can do that schools. right now. You can do it right this second. You, you don't want to want, you know, gratitude- and giving and and the expression of love in that format. Yeah. I don't want to get too philosophical, I but the expression of this. love, that is the greatest thing to cure depression. You can take SSRIs and do all these other things that you want, take, yep. buy these nootropic drugs. We always want to yeah. take a pill for Micro, something. Microdose some mushrooms, whatever. But, but when you give out of mm-hmm. your heart. Talk about a dopamine hit. That, that, that cures it. And then you get that feeling of gratitude. Yeah. That, like, even right now, I'm getting, like, little tingles. I all know. Over. Yeah. That's because you got five or six neurochemical factors happening <laughs> in your brain that are making you light up. Yeah. Just at the thought of helping. And, and you the, can do that today. And, and you can be in Nigeria and do this. You, you can, can be, be in Canada. You can be sitting this. on your house, not going to work, smoking weed, and still do this. Mm-hmm. 100%. Awesome. Do yes. it. Yeah. Help humanity. Help people. Feel or, good or, about or, it. Or, or maybe you do need some food to support your family. Yeah, because you're in a pinch. Yeah. And well, you're having a hard time looking your husband or wife in the face saying, I don't think I can make food work this week. I can't go to the grocery store. Yeah. Those are not good scenarios. People shouldn't have to feel like that. And that's why the Tartar Marketplace is the answer to humanity because we solve these issues. We can solve it. You can actually get fairly compensated for the work you put in. Mm. No one will take it from you. It won't be, become worth less over time. Because what people don't realize is, and we'll close on this. I want you to talk about this. What people don't realize is no matter how you want to make it agnostic, our being of who we are, our will, and in, in our self-preservation, we attach morals to everything that we spend money in. Yeah. We, we may not realize it, but it, it's like it, if somebody's at a job that they know they're stealing from people, they can put it out of their head, but it's always this nag. There's a reason for that. Yeah. You know what you're doing. Yes. There's some sort of conscious awareness and you try to ignore it. Yes. It'll happen all the time. So if you want to help alleviate some of that mental pressure you've created, do some good. Do some good for you. Do some good for others. Will something into existence that needs to be there. Truly share. Become a part of the human element. Uplift others' faces of people you've never seen before, but directly help them. That's something that's truly going to help in this world. And then stop double dipping from the company books. 